The most common that I see in clients that come to me, common mistake is getting something small on a large area on your body. For example, getting a small tattoo on your arm or in the middle of your back or any other location that you want to size up the design to fit the body part because it's much more easier and better looking to tattoo a cohesive design on your arm than have one small here and then a completely different style around it. Yeah, I, I made that mistake. <laughs> <Look at it. laughs> Get a pocket watch with roses on it. That's probably the biggest mistake. Compasses, roses, pocket watches. Clocks and roses are massive. Like everybody is having clocks Buddy, and roses. What's wrong with roses? A lion in a rose, layered. Virgin Mary in a rose, layered. Oh my gosh, that's so original. And I did a hashtag stop compass tattoo abuse. And it's not <laughs> necessary for compass tattoos, but just you see a lot of the same repetitive elements. I'm a street shop kind of guy. I've done a lot of those. The most common tattoo mistake that clients make is getting their boyfriend or girlfriend tattooed on Valentine's Day. It's been multiple times that I've done a tattoo of a name on Valentine's Day and the girl or the boy, two weeks later, are getting it covered up. And that's because they would get the tattoo a day before Valentine's Day, and then on Valentine's Day, I guess they found out that they weren't that person's Valentine's Day. We've all had those clients that have come in with a name crossed out, name crossed out, name crossed out, and it's just like, Oh, it's just the latest one on the list, isn't it? Unsolicited advice is probably one of the worst. Um, and actually even more so than that, coming in with that dumb face and that whole tone, like, are you really gonna do that? Why would you do that? And you're like, well, cause you're looking at something at 30%, shut the fuck up, let me put my 70% extra in there. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, that the unsolicited advice and then that whole, uh, you know, why isn't this looking finished? Well, because it's not, Karen. It's not. I would have to say biggest client mistake right now that I see is people not doing their research and just wanting it right now and then just going to anybody. Commenting on my photo that you want to get a tattoo now and then commenting on the next photo from three months ago that you want to get a tattoo from me yesterday. Uh, as opposed to just writing an educated email with like a proper header, header and footer, you know? <laughs> like, like, hello, my name is uh, Dave and I would love to get a tattoo from you, you know? Not just like, hi, I want a tattoo now. Kind of be cheap about getting a tattoo. They come in and first ask how much, instead of asking who's the best qualified artist. That's what I see every day. You send a DM and just ask somebody how much. It doesn't make us think that you're a serious client. It makes us think that you're just price shopping around rather than maybe, you know, submitting the form the correct way or sending the email the right way that we need it. For me, putting too much emphasis on what their friends think. Like when they bring two and three and four friends and then like you have like this relationship with your client and they have to like get confirmation from, from their friends and like their friends don't know about tattoos. And they're all, it's just, it just becomes a big mess. But like, I always tell them, just bring one person with you. I, I, I can sway one other person. The mistake that clients make the most is not listening to the advice of their artist. It's not just about the installation. We're not plumbers, it's not like a technical thing. I would say that honestly, far worse tattooers can do as good a job if you give them the exact stencil and the exact reference. What you're paying for is our mindset and our decision-making process. So if you're not listening to us, what the hell are you even doing? Like you could do this cheaper somewhere else. Art directing, I, or, or maybe I should just say not trusting the artist, but maybe that goes back to not choosing the right artist for what they want. You know, it's like you can't just choose anybody. So if a client comes in, does their research, finds someone who does a dolphin really well, you know, for instance, instead of trying to change the way that someone else naturally works, I think they'll get a better piece out of it. You just gotta do your research, man. You know, you gotta you gotta research your artists, figure out who's good at what. Cause not everybody, of course, it's great to be well-rounded, but not everybody, you know, especially in this day and age, everyone kind of has a specialty. So do your damn research, man. People don't understand that I don't do just all types of tattoos, that I do like black and gray realism and usually dark stuff too. They don't get it. They're like, what do you mean 
Like, cause I don't like, I don't do family portraits cause it just makes me uncomfortable. I don't like doing it. Like people don't understand when I said, they're like, what do you mean you don't do that? You just tattooed a picture of a girl with blood dripping down her face. I'm like, yeah, it's not your mom. Like, it's, it's different. Um, I think that there's a lot of, you know what? I'll say clients also listen to who they're dating, who they're married to, their parents, and they just go, just shut up and let's do what we want. Like, I promise you, it's gonna be better in every measurable and immeasurable way. Um, it, you know, you don't hire somebody who's a professional artist for the strict purpose of disregarding all of their artistic value. Yeah, the most common mistake would be having the client basically design their own tattoo. Thinking about the amount of details without realizing how much of a trouble uh, it can be in, I don't know, five years time, 10 years time, sometimes one year time. They're getting a tattoo and so they're like, I need to get everything in this tattoo. Everything that has ever meant anything to me has to be represented in this tattoo. They think about it too much and they make the artist like do the tattoo that they designed and it just never works out. Everybody kind of fantasizes about their tattoo for a long time and they almost end up wanting to throw every single idea that they have into one little tattoo and then you end up putting like 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag. You just want to do a tattoo of like a cat riding a unicycle or something or like a dead girl like making out with a spider. You know, normal stuff like that. But instead they're like, yeah, but the thing is, the girl has to look exactly like my uncle and the spider has to look exactly like me and I don't want to get into that but the spider also has to have a tattoo of my birthday and my death day and I don't know my death day yet but I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look in a witch's eye and then I'm gonna email correspond back to you when I'm going to die and how it's going to happen so that we can have a representation visually of my death in the background. Spoiler alert, I think it's gonna have something to do with the ocean. So they have to be underwater. And also I would like some jellyfish. But then in the end result, then they get to see like the, the more simple the subject matter, the more detail and the more striking that one thing really is. And a lot of times I just say, if you have all these ideas, get a bunch of different tattoos. You're gonna get one and wanna come back for more. I'll get people being like, oh, it's, it'll take like five minutes. So, you know, you can do this. You can squeeze me in. Um, but there's just so much more to it. You know, the prep work, the design work, the placement, um, and obviously the execution. So, you know, um, you never want to rush art. We had this client that was in such a big rush. And I'm like, why would you want to rush that process? It's just, it's on there forever. <laughs> they underestimate how much time and effort and work and labor of quiet nights alone has gone into this art form. And then they start to be comparative with critiquing what, let's say, someone's price is or what someone's time frame is. I think that those things can, can come off a little bit insulting if you don't know the industry that well, because let's say, for instance, if you're basing it off of uh, time, then you're comparing off of what's the end result and why is your sense of an idea of quality not the same in relation to this person's time frame to achieve quality as well. And then you got people critiquing and judging and comparing. And as you know, comparing is a horrible thing to do when, you, when you're talking about someone revealing their soul artistically. You know, you don't want to be compared to anyone. And as we know, that old saying, cheap ain't good and good ain't cheap. And so I, I, I believe in investing. If you want something done right, invest. It's okay, it's a good thing. One of the things we used to do in the studio that I trained in, when we had regular clients that used to come in with their children, so you'd see their children growing up over the years. And of course, I want tattoos when I'm old enough. So what we started doing was going, right, start making a list of all the tattoos you want. And then when you're 18, we'll see, we'll have a look at your list. And most of them, by the time they were 18, either deferred having a tattoo for a bit longer because they saw how many things they absolutely wanted. And now, oh my God, I can't believe I ever wanted that. Uh, That's honestly not that far off from an email that I got. It did involve jellyfish. Wow. But did it involve the death day? Someone ever done the death day? No one. I wish someone would. Yeah. I if if someone went that far, I'd be like, you know what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's illustrate your own death on you. It'll be like 
I don't know, like a reverse memento or something. Like, let's do it. 